At this place in history, we're in Burlington with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, we're specifically on the UVM campus this week, so what brings us here? We are, Mike. You know, I think people maybe get a clue from the sign right yep. next to us that we're at the Fleming Museum of Art here on the campus of the University of Vermont one of Vermont's oldest art museums. Mm. And I think it's, uh, at this day and age, maybe a bit of a hidden gem. It's named for Robert Hull Fleming, who was a graduate of the University of Vermont in the 1860s. His niece, Catherine Walcott, do donated money to the university for a memorial for him. Initially, her gift was not for a museum. Okay. Um, and um, Guy Bailey, who was the president at the time, actually orchestrated a sort of combination of gifts from also James Wilbur, benefactor of the Ira Allen Chapel. So they kind of coordinated the gifts together in order to build a museum. And we still have on view one of the earliest acquisitions, which is mm. the Colchester Jar. When the museum first opened, there was geological samples here, there were um, zoological samples mm. here, and things of that nature. And I guess it was in about the 1950s when there started being a shift towards more art. It's a striking building it is and so uh, you know when you're driving down colchester avenue and you've got this big old modern ho old yeah. big modern new hospital over here and all these modern and this building really kind of stands out can you tell me a little bit about the architecture and the choices made about it and then this beautiful marble hall initially the design that mckim mead and white had prepared mm -hmm was not satisfactory to Catherine Walcott. Hmm. And so she ended up drawing a little diagram on hotel stationery of what she wanted the marble court to look like. Mm -hmm. And the court actually looked very similar to that drawing. She wanted a sculpture area. What I think is really wonderful is that the very first headlines about the museum when it opened in 1931 were about it as a place of lifelong learning. We have it in old scrapbooks, it's really great to see. And I think that's what we continue to be. This particular uh, room that we are in right now has a, a very vibrant and very active educational purpose and it's called uh, the Learning Studio. I love this space because as a collections manager, I like being able to make the collections of a museum as accessible as possible. And one great way is in a kind of an informal space where people can look at objects closely and maybe not without a whole lot of labels, but a, a, you know, spaces to talk about them and to right. examine them. Our visitation is actually divided almost equally between the community and the campus. And it's rooms and spaces like these that really have helped to uh, grow that integration within the campus community. Just recently we had, like for example, a natural resources class here, and I think there were 80 some students that did a lab over a series of four days here in this space. And Margaret selected and pulled objects that were related to their studies. And now we have a selection of silk screens and screen prints that have been studied by a studio art class. So when the general public sees this and decides, I'm going to go see the yep. Fleming Museum, what are they going to see here right now? What kind of exhibits are they going to see and what can, what can they do? Well, first of all, they can see this space because our hope is to have this space open as much as possible and we're able to staff it so they can see what the classes are looking at. And you never quite know week to week what you might mm. see. An artistic treasure hiding in plain sight at UVM at this place in history.